In this video, we're going to talk about maximum likelihood estimation. So first, what is the difference between probability and statistics? So what we've been doing up to this point is probability. We're given a model, okay, so Bernoulli with this particular p is 0.5, okay, that's our assumption. And we're, we're trying to tell, uh, find out the probability of some data. So given this model, what is the probability of, you know, tail, head, head, tail, head, head? And that's actually something we know how to do now. And so what we're going to focus on now is going the opposite way. So given uh, there's this coin, I don't know what the probability of heads is, but I flip it and I get tail, head, head, tail, head, head. How can I use the data to predict this value of P? So let's say I give you and your classmates each five minutes with a coin with unknown probability of heads P. Whoever has the closest estimate will get an A plus in the class. What would you do in your precious five minutes and what would you give as your estimate? I don't know about you guys, but I would flip the coin as many times as I can and I'll return the number of heads over the total number of flips. And this will actually turn out to be a really good estimate. Let's say you saw four heads and one tail. So you're going to tell me uh, your estimate p hat is four fifths. The hat just means it's an estimate. How can you argue objectively that this is the best estimate? So is there some objective function that it maximizes? And it turns out, yes. Actually, four fifths okay, maximizes this blue curve, which is called the likelihood of the data. So the likelihood of um, the data. So we're assuming a model for our example, it's a Bernoulli, because it's just coin flips, uh, with unknown parameter theta. And we receive ID samples, x1 through xn, from this distribution. That means each of these samples are either 0 or 1, or heads or tails. The likelihood of the data, given a parameter theta, is defined to be the probability of seeing the data given theta. So this is the probability that we saw x1 and x2 and all the way to xn. So like probability of seeing heads first, and then tails, and then heads, and so on. And because they're independent, we can multiply them. So we can actually say the probability of seeing x1 times the probability of seeing x2, and so on, all the way to xn. And that's the likelihood. So first, a sample or realization of a random variable x is the value that's actually observed. So this is going to be, like uh, again, for Bernoulli, it'll be 0, 1. For geometric, it'll be some positive number from 1 uh, with no upper bound. And the likelihood um, of x, of the data x, is the probability of seeing the data. So for discrete random variables, OK, the likelihood is the product of the probability that you see x1, x2, all the way to xn. For continuous random variables, it's the product of the density functions. And I want you to take a, uh, to take a second and think about why we are allowed to multiply these densities. Because the probability of seeing all the data will be 0, because um, the probability of equaling a particular value is always 0. So we need to go back and review calculus really quick. So how do we optimize a function? So what are these three points? These are all local optimum. What do they have in common? And the answer to that is that their derivative is 0, or the slope is 0. And um, so we're going to try to set the derivative of our likelihood to 0 so we can solve for um, optimum. So the likelihood of our, let's say, four heads and one tail, OK, given theta, OK, is the probability of seeing each of these data points. So it's theta times theta times theta times theta times 1 minus theta. So this blue curve here is actually theta to the fourth minus theta to the fifth. It's the likelihood of the data given a parameter theta. And the x-axis is different values of theta. Now we take the derivative and set it to 0. I'm going to skip that math, but basically theta hat will be 4 fifths or 0. And you can see 0 is a minimizer, while 4 fifths is a maximizer. So that's our maximum likelihood estimate. We're trying to find a theta that maximizes this likelihood function. One more bit of notation, the difference between max and argmax. So here is a function, 1 minus x squared. The maximum value is 1. That's like the highest value this function can ever achieve. The argmax is 0. And argmax just means the argument that maximizes the function. So which x actually achieved f of x equals 1? Well, that's x equals 0. And so in MLE, we're trying to find a theta that maximizes the likelihood. We don't care what the value of the likelihood is. We didn't compute it last time. We just cared that it was 4 fifths. So in maximum likelihood estimation, our goal is to find an estimator, theta hat, which is the argmax of the likelihood. And this is actually the same as the argmax of the log likelihood. This is something we'll talk about in a second. Um, but we want to take logs because the likelihood is that, remember, it's a product of a bunch of probabilities, and products, derivatives of products are ugly, while uh, derivatives of sums are nice. Um, so here's a recipe to find the MLE, which is what we did earlier. Uh, there's more examples in the next video. So why can we maximize um, the log likelihood or the log function instead of just a function? It turns out here's a function, here's log of that function. Okay? The values are actually different if you look at the x-axis. However, it happens that one still maximizes both of them, right? And it actually turns out, um, because log is monotone increasing, it preserves order. And so whatever was maximum in the original function will also maximize the log of that function.